Hello, everybody. It is week five in our chemistry class, and the, we have two primary topics this week. Polyatomic bonding. How do you do ionic bonding with polyatomic ions? And we're going to talk some about covalently bonded compounds. But let's get a running start. The story so far is we have been talking about why atoms bond, and they bond to have a full octet, a full eight in their outer electron energy level, or a full two if they are tiny little things like hydrogen, lithium, and beryllium. There are two primary ways that atoms can do this, ionic bonding, and last week we talked a lot about that, and that involves a two-step process. Atoms transfer electrons. One is a big, the nonmetals are big pullers on electrons. They want those electrons. And the metals don't hold their electrons as strongly, so they are the donators of electrons. Then those opposite charges attract, and you have an ionic bond. Some elements, like the metals in the transition, middle part of the periodic table, have more than one common ion, and that often accompanies a color change, but not always. The other way that atoms can achieve this full octet or duet for the little atoms is by covalent bonding. And we haven't talked a lot about that, but we're going to do that the latter half of the week. But the primary objective for our first talk of this week is how do you bond with polyatomic ions? So what the heck is a polyatomic ion? Well, poly in chemistry means many. Atomic, of course, means atoms. So a polyatomic ion, these are ions, which remember are charged particles, made of groups of atoms. And here is a list of some common ones. There are many, many more, but this is a small list that we are going to use throughout the course. Now, in the class itself, there is a list of polyatomic ions or common ions that I would recommend that you download and print. That might be helpful to you. So what are these polyatomic ions? Well, these are stable configurations of atoms that happen to have a net charge. And they are found so often in nature that scientists give them their own name. It's sort of like when you go to a fast food restaurant, uh, the companies decided that they get so often people walking in saying, hey, I want a hamburger, fries, and a drink, that they gave it a combo number. Combo number one, two, seven, nine, whatever. Well, that's what polyatomic ions are. These combinations are so common that scientists gave them their own name when they're referring to them. And these names are kind of familiar. Uh, chromate, chlorate, chlor chloride, carbonate, acetate, ammonium, cyanide, hypochlorate, nitrate, nitride, hydroxide, hydrogen carbonate, dichromate. When you read through the list, you're going to go, I've heard of those. And that's because they are very common. The thing is, these combos all have a net charge. Positive 1, positive 2, negative 1, negative 2, or 3. That makes them ions. Now, when we bond with polyatomic ions, here's the good news. And it's really good news. We bond them exactly the same way we have been bonding all of our other ionic compounds. So if you got that, Last time we were t working on this, great. You don't have anything else to learn except one little more tweak, one more small thing. So the process is exactly the same. If you were a little shaky last week on this, the good news is you get a lot of practice and you only have to add one more thing. So we're going to do it the same way. Find the ion number of each, write the positive one first, Ask, are the digits the same? If yes, you just have one of each ion. If no, we're going to crisscross. If there's a common denominator, we're going to reduce it to its simplest form. But this is the thing I had you write down last week when we had what I had you write down these steps to ionic bonding, and we never got to this point. Now we're going to add it in, and that is we're going to use parentheses if you have multiple polyatomics. So let's go through some of these. I want to bond calcium and bicarbonate. Now calcium is a group 2 metal, an alkali earth group 2. All of those are a plus 2, so calcium is going to be plus 2. Bicarbonate, now you are going to get a big hint that's probably polyatomic if it ends in ite or ate. Not all of them end in ite or ate, 
but a lot of them do. So if you see that, think polyatomic. I want your little brain to kind of go off like a light bulb and go, aha, I'm going to look at that polyatomic list. So bicarbonate is right here, and that's HCO3, and the whole thing is a negative one. So write the positive one first. We did that. Then are the digits the same? They're not. This is a two. This is a one. If they're not the same, we crisscross. This goes here and that goes there. So calcium, we never write one as a subscript, so we're not putting anything there. HCO3, all of this is the bicarbonate ion, and then the two comes down. Now, this is where we have to use this step. If you have multiple polyatomics, we have to put parentheses around the polyatomic ion because this two means we have two bicarbonate ions. Because look what it looks like otherwise. If we don't, it looks like you have 32 oxygen atoms and that looks stupid and you don't want that. You want two polyatomics, so that is our correct answer. Okay, next. Naming compounds with the polyatomics. The naming is really easy. You never, ever, ever change the name of a polyatomic ion when you name the compound. You write down the name of the first ion plus the name of the second ion with no changes and no changes in ending. So what's the name of my compound? It is simply calcium bicarbonate. That is not too difficult because you don't change anything. You just write down its first name and its last name. Okay, let's do some more. So we're going to bond and name iron 3 and nitrate. Now, if you remember, iron 3, that's one of those transition metals from the middle, and iron 3 tells us that's the ion of iron. Iron, in this case, is going to bond with an ionic number of plus 3. Nitrate, that 8 at the end, is going to make your brain go, aha, polyatomic. So you look at the chart for nitrate, and here is nitrate. Nitrate is N. O3 and the charge is negative 1. Then you go through the steps. Is the positive 1 first? Yes. Are they the same? No. If no, crisscross. This goes here and this goes there. So Fe1, do we write down ones? Never, ever, ever, ever. NO3, the 3 comes over. And if I have 33 oxygens, that looks stupid. So we're not going to do that. So we're going to use a parenthesis to indicate we have three nitrates. What's its name? Iron 3 nitrate. You got it? Not a lot different. The only thing you have to watch out for is the added parentheses. Okay, let's do another one. Bleach. Bleach is, by convention, when you buy normal chlorine bleach, it is 5.25% active ingredient, which is sodium hypochlorate. If you buy cheap generic bleach or you'd buy fancy name brand bleach, it's all the same, 5.25% sodium hypochlorite. The difference between one and the other is pretty smells or no drip spouts and things like that. But it is chemically the same stuff. So let's find the formula for sodium hypochlorite. Sodium is a group one metal. So there's my sodium. Sodium group one is all of those have a plus one charge. Hypochlorite, hypochlorite. Now this is an ite. Ite should make you think, aha, polyatomic. Hypochlorite is ClO minus one. Is the positive one written first? Yes. Are they the same charge? Yes. If they're the same charge, that means you have one of each. So it's going to be N-A-C-L-O. And that is my chemical formula. Not too bad? Not too bad. Now, do I have to put parentheses? Nope, because I do not have multiple polyatomics. I only have one of each kind. So I'm good. All right. Try this one. Hit pause and give this a go, and we're going to come back and do it together. 
Okay, my friends, let's do this. Fair us. Remember I said that the old-fashioned names are commonly used in medicine? This is a common iron supplement given to people who need to up the iron content in their blood, people who are anemic, for example. Fair us. Iron can come in a plus two or a plus three. Okay, fair us. Ick is the big one. So this isn't the big one. This is the little one. So this is going to be iron plus two. Self eight, that's an eight. Eight is a polyatomic. So that's this one. SO4 plus two. Positive is written first. Are they the same charge? FE. SO4. Do I put parentheses anywhere? No, because I do not have to make a multiple of any of the poly of the polyatomic, so I'm good. Okay, let's do another one. Hit pause. Try this one. All right, lithium carbonate is commonly given to people who have mood disorders. And so lithium, lithium is from group one. Group one is plus one. Carbon eight, eight, do, 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 carbonate, where are you? Carbonate is right there. CO3, two, minus. Positive written first, yes. Are they the same charge? No, so you crisscross. Lithium, two comes down, CO3, do we ever write ones in subscripts? No, and that is it. And you go, why are there no parentheses? Well, you don't need parentheses around just an element like lithium, and there's only one carbonate, and the name is lithium carbonate. All right, last one. Try this. Hit pause, try that. This one's tricky, and why is this one tricky? Ammonium is a polyatomic, so if it took you a while to find ammonium. Ammonium, NH4, and ammonium is the only common positive or, an, or cation, positive cation polyatomic. Phosphate, phosphate is PO4 plus three, Oops, minus three, minus three. Is the positive first? Yes. Are they the same? No. So you crisscross. So this is going to be NH4. The three's coming down. If I have 43 hydrogens, that looks stupid. So we're going to have three ammoniums. So we're going to put parentheses. PO4, the whole thing is a phosphate. One comes down. Do we ever write ones in subscripts? Never, ever, ever. So one PO4, we leave it like that. That is ammonium phosphate. All right, you're going to get lots of practice in the study guide this week. Make sure you check the key and to make sure you're doing it right. And I suggest you practice, check, practice, check. Use it as a tool to make sure you are doing these properly because you know they're going to have some on the quiz. All right, have a super, super week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.